Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to Scorched Earth Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Not Caliber Wings Mac Z 172 scale Tomcat Shin Special. This is not an officially licensed product. Some people have already complained to me about that, so I want to make a few things clear. First, I am not a fan of knockoffs that copy official products. Even so, it's possible I'll review a Valkyrie factory product someday. Second, I'm not a fan of unlicensed goods that compete with official products, something we see pretty often in Transformers collecting. Third, rights issues aside, I think it's cool when third parties address gaps official licensees haven't broached. It's been 18 years and no Japanese company has made a completed die-cast model of Shin's ride, so it's hard to argue anyone is harmed by this product. Similarly, I still love my master-made, super-deformed SDF-1. Also, Big West is notoriously difficult to get a license from. I don't think they give licenses to foreigners at all because of the Tatsunoko rights debacle. And once anyone does business with HG or Tatsunoko, they're dead to Big West. So companies that want to support Macross outside of Japan are screwed. So, for my part, I have no problem reviewing this product, and it's beautiful, so I have no problem recommending it. But if you need to know Big West is getting money from every Macross good you purchase, then I absolutely support your decision to shrug this one off. Since this isn't an officially licensed product, you can't find this one at Big Bad Toy Store and should instead hit CaliberWings.com or your preferred diecast model vendor. If you're taking the high road, you can also find lots of officially licensed goods from Macross, Robotech, Mespita, Transformers, and tons of other shows at Big Bad Toy Store by clicking that link in the comments below. Since this isn't an official release, there are some quirks. The model comes in a blank white box with some text indicating what's inside and the Black Aces non-brand badging. There is no flip top lid and no artwork. Sliding the plastic tray out will reveal two other voids. The spot for the authenticity card is vacant and there's no pouch with instructions. Don't fear though, I'll cover what you need here and you can find a scan of the instructions that were included in previous releases up on anymoon.com. Those previous releases also included a second tray that contained a display stand and a baggie containing standing pilot figures with bases, but those are not included with this model. For those of you who like to leave your Tomcats on the shelves looking like they've been parked, you do get intake fan covers and wheel blocks. Also included are Shin and Edgar figures, afterburner position engine nozzles, six AIM 120 AMRAMs, two AIM 9 Sidewinders on rails, two missile pylons, two fuel tanks, the little antenna you'll need to install on the nose, and underneath the model are three closed landing gear doors with the landing gear pre-installed. Pulling the model from the tray, you're gonna to wanna to grab your silver antenna and just plug it right into that hole in the nose. Now I do recommend you put a little dot of glue on before you do this, and don't do it with lights and a camera in front of your face because then you won't get it right in, but that little glue will help you keep that antenna in there because otherwise the fit is just a little bit loose and if you handle the model you might lose that piece and that would be very very distracting going forward the model does come with the landing gear installed the front landing gear do have wheels that spin and rubber tires the rear landing gear are just rubber tires but they can spin on top of that fixed wheel you can also see pretty nice detail a little wash to the white paint there flipping the toy back over we can reach into our parts bin and pull these little yellow blocks out and put them in front of the tires and then grab these red intake fan covers that the maintenance crew would install inside of the fans here and so we can push that up and it's a lot easier to do without lights and a camera in front of your face that piece you can see some of the fit on these things is a little bit loose Generally, not too bad as you handle the model, but it is a model. It doesn't fit quite like a toy. Once we get those on, put that there, and there you go. Now it's in maintenance mode, parked, waiting for its day of duty.
As you are ready for action, take out your pilot figure, which should look like this, and you'll note it's a fresh new mold, complete with UN Spacey style flight suit and helmet with that tube that comes down in front and that visor on top. It looks just like the character from Macross Zero. And you'll note even on the canopy glass, they've got the pilot names. Nice bit of detail work there. The cockpit opens up, the canopy comes up like so. I've already put the Edgar figure in the back. He's a little tighter fit and hard to do on screen. We'll now take the shin figure. There is a control right between the legs that you're gonna have to fish around as you bring the legs in. A little rubbery figure should fit in there nice and snug once he is. You'll also notice while we've got the cockpit open, there's really nice detail work in there, and it's really, it's tough to see, but there, even the Rio uh, panel up in the front, different from the pilot's panel. There's side detail work on either side of the arms. Kind of tough to see, but it's all there, and it's very nice. And then that canopy comes down, and there you go. You've got those pilots in, and it looks just like Macross Zero. The toy comes with a number of missiles that slot in underneath the belly. You're just gonna take your missile and you're gonna peg it in. There's holes for pe two pegs and then for the fin and they'll just line up. You'll put a little pressure on there and it'll sink right in. Now, there is some uniformity issues here. Some of these missiles are a little tighter than others. You might have to resort to putting a little dot of glue on top of the peg to make it a little thicker so things fit on there tighter. But as you can see, I've got those missiles on, nothing falling off. What becomes a little more problematic are these side hard points. So they do have a separate missile that I've already installed there, just pegs right in. And then you've got this little piece here that pegs in as well, with a little side wider on it. So there we go. And as you've seen from other reviews I've done of these, this is just a very awkward shape. No, not caliper wings as well, that's what the Tomcat has. That little peg then goes in at an angle up in the front here and we peg it in and it will hopefully stay on there but it's in a position where your hand is accidentally going to bump that area a lot and here we had the landing gear fall off instead of the missile but those missiles falling off is going to be a frequent issue if you're handling this model so be aware of that. A good step there would be to, again, use glue to thicken up that peg right there. Not necessarily glue it to the model, just to thicken up the peg. So when you go to install it, it stays on there a little bit better. So yeah, you can see that's, that's pretty problematic. Expect to have to do a little bit of maintenance. Okay, we are ready to take off. We might want to extend our wings at this point. We can adjust our stabilizers in the rear. And then we are going to go ahead and remove the landing gear, which is easily enough done. Just a little pressure upward and they will pop right out. Uh, we could have also inserted our external fuel tanks here to get a little bit further away. We could also come back to here and make this thing be going a little bit faster by constricting its sphincters as you would. Then we can take our bays and close them up. But before we do that, there are glove veins, which I'm not sure was an exactly long lived feature of the Tomcat. But what we can do with these bays open, take a toothpick, shove it in there and then just kind of apply a little pressure outward and you will pop out the glove veins. So there we go. So there you go, if you like the look of it, that is another option for you. We can turn the vehicle back around and we can then put the covers in to get that full flight effect. Now, unfortunately, you do not get a display stand with this release. So you're gonna have to grab one of your other display stands and use that if this is how you want to display it. So you've been flying around for a little while and you're ready to come in for a landing. Go ahead and bring the hook down off the back to catch the cable. And then you can engage the air brake by pressing down in this corner up in the front here that brings things up and then you can pull that free. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is shove a toothpick or something similar in through the vents. 
and that allows you to push the bottom section down as well. And there you can see you've got the air brakes open top and bottom to come in for that landing. While some of the earlier Tomcats had some build quality issues, my Mac Z release is rock solid. With the exception of the loose fit of the missiles, uh, which I'm a little more forgiving on since this is a model and not a toy, you can absolutely handle this model. The weathering effect is gorgeous and definitely sets this model above toys you may want to pair it with. At 172 scale, this model is about 26 centimeters long, which is still decently large. At 508 grams, this model is heavier than a Bandai DX VF1. That said, fans of my channel will likely wish this were 160 scale to go along with the toys they own. Other than the scale, the missiles, and the licensing issues, there really isn't anything here for me to pick on. This is a beautiful and well-executed Tomcat, so if you can get past those hurdles, you should pick one up. Check out anymoon.com for the full review, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.